plugging the pin into the bucket-sized socket. Once the cable is in the water, there's no turning back. Okay, coming down. Okay, coming down. After a four-hour journey, the moment of truth is at hand. The uh, stab point for us. The cable lowers to the sea floor, a dozen feet from the connector. ROVs, remotely operated vehicles, are the engineers' eyes and hands on the sea floor. They're launched from the ship at the start of every underwater operation. Without them, engineers can't plug in the control cable. Stuart, do you happen to see that, uh, that mud mat in front of you there? The crew steers the Toysa Perseus okay, and the plug dangling far below, closer to the metal structure. If it hits and they damage the high-tech plug, this multi-million dollar cable will be nothing but junk on the bottom of the sea. Ready to try and stab this? Inserting the stabbing pin at the end of the cable into the small socket on the connector is a real challenge. It's like making a perfect dunk shot from an airplane flying at 9,000 feet. For the Perseus and the entire team of mega movers, one technology gives them the critical ability to stay exactly on target. Dynamic positioning. Computers measure every factor affecting the ship's position and control the engines to hover in one spot, move forward or backward, or even sideways. Fly it over the uh, stab point for us. On the bridge of the Perseus, the crew relies on an ROV, a remotely operated vehicle, to guide the stabbing pin toward her target. Then it clockwise 94. It's in, but something's wrong. It won't lock. Oh, and just put it on the uh, swivel plate and tried to push the swivel plate around. The stabbing pin is turned out of position, and there's nothing the ROV can do to turn it back. Without a perfect connection, this cable will be useless. BLS bridge, uh, come the up crew comes meter, up with a clever strategy. They enter a new heading for the Perseus, and as the ship rotates, it swivels the cable, turning the stabbing pin on its axis. And okay, we put a meter of slack in it. The plan works. Yeah, Roger, I'll stop on it. The pin finally locks into the socket. Okay, can you follow it over uh, and just watch the touchdown for me? With the hardest part of the mission accomplished, the Perseus can now lay the miles of cable that will control the flow of gas from the well. The Mega Movers have tackled three out of five major parts of the Independence Project. They've tested the 15 wells, laid 210 miles of pipes to bring the gas to the processing platform, and installed control cables throughout the network. A major step remains, building the giant pipeline to get the gas to shore. It will take almost 20,000 pipes and months of work to construct the 135-mile Independence Trail. And there's only one ship in the world strong enough to build it, the All Seas Solitaire. She's got to lay this huge pipeline before the processing hub can pump gas. Few vessels would dare to attempt this mission, but the Solitaire's not just any ship. She's the largest pipe-laying vessel in the world. At 1,200 feet, the Eiffel Tower could easily lay on her deck. A pipe-welding assembly line runs the entire length of the ship and a huge stinger juts from her stern to guide the pipeline to the sea floor. Like the Lorelei, the other pipe-laying ship on the project, the Solitaire builds the pipeline in one continuous motion, welding the pipes together inside her hull, then depositing the finished pipeline on the sea floor. But unlike the other ship, she does it on a much, much bigger scale. The Solitaire's six cavernous holes carry over 21,000 tons of pipe. 
That's more than the weight of 120 jumbo jets. Even this many pipes doesn't last long. Solitaire can lay four miles of pipe in a day. Huge barges constantly replenish the supply of pipes to keep this mega pipe layer busy. And that's where the ship's cranes swing into action. They're built for speed. Most cranes have a single long boom. These monsters have two arms, giving them amazing accuracy and speed. To complete the independence project on schedule, the solitaire has to build and lay the pipeline fast. First, the crew mills the pipe's ends to provide a smooth, clean surface. Then, the pipe is welded together at eight welding stations. Each weld adds more strength to the joint. A special drone even welds the seam inside the huge pipe. Completing this pipeline will take over 21,000 welds. When every station is ready, a bell rings and the pipe seems to move out the back of the ship and into the sea. But that's not what really happens. Miles of pipe on the sea floor connect directly to the ship like a massive anchor. Huge tensioners like tractor treads squeeze the pipe to hold it or let it out. When the pipe moves through the firing line and then into the sea, it's really the ship that creeps forward on the new pipeline growing in her belly. The solitaire works around the clock to complete the pipeline on schedule. This is the deepest pipeline she's ever laid. But her biggest challenge is still ahead. Installing a massive T assembly a connector that will allow future pipelines to link to the Independence Trail. Welding the large spigot-shaped T into the pipeline shouldn't be hard. The difficulty will come in trying to push the bulky structure out of an assembly line designed for pipes. The crew has a plan, but it's risky. 135 miles away on the Texas coast, work reaches a fever pitch on the final part of the project. The Independence Hub. This huge floating platform will process all the gas from the project's 15 deep sea wells and send it 135 miles to shore along the Independence Trail. Soon, this mega structure will be towed out to the gas field. But first, they have to finish building it. The hub is made up of two parts, the upper unit or processing platform, and the lower unit, a hull that will keep the hub afloat. The massive platform will process a billion cubic feet of natural gas each day, enough for the cooking and heating needs of five million U.S. households. When it's done, it will be the heart of the largest gas processing project in the Gulf and the deepest anchored platform in the world. But first, the team needs to join the upper and lower units together. Just outside the harbor, another mega mover arrives, the mighty Servant 3. On her back, the massive flotation hull, the four-towered structure on which the platform will rest. The mighty servant has brought the hull all the way from Singapore where it was built, an incredible 10,000 mile journey. Now she has to offload her cargo, and she does it in a very unusual way. Huge ballast tanks inside will slowly flood, letting the ship settle two stories lower in the water. 
Then, the tugs will pull the hull free. It's a simple but dangerous process. Both the ship and its cargo can quickly become unstable. And the huge towers of the hull can catch the wind like sails. In a strong gust, the hull could sway, crushing anything in its path. Conditions have to be perfect, but today, that's not what Mother Nature has in mind. Out in the Gulf of Mexico, the Solitaire is about to tackle a critical part of the Independence Gas Project. The ships already laid miles of pipeline called the Independence Trail to bring processed gas to shore. Now it has to install a massive T so that future pipelines can hook up to the Independence Trail. First, the crew must weld the T into the pipeline, but there's a problem. The joint between the pipeline and the T has to be lined up perfectly and the tool used to align the joint is jammed inside the T, bringing the entire operation to a screeching halt. While the rest of this massive factory waits, engineers scramble to free the alignment tool. Yes, you can't pull it by hand. We'll put a winch on it, pull it on through. Don't you pass that one around that one like this? A chain hoist and manpower does the trick. The solitaire is in business again, and the T moves down the firing line. Now is when the operation gets dangerous. As the pipeline exits the solitaire's hull, three powerful clamps called tensioners bear its weight. They hold the massive strain of nearly two miles of pipeline hanging between the ship and the sea floor. But to let the huge T pass, each tensioner or clamp has to be opened one at a time. And all the weight of the pipeline, 655 tons, is shifted to only two tensioners. If one fails now, hundreds of feet of pipe will whiplash through the ship on its way to the sea floor. The solitaire starts to move the T through the firing line. The first of three tensioners opens. All eyes watch as the T inches forward. The other two tensioners strain under the load, but they hold. Twice more, one tensioner opens and the entire strain of the pipeline is held by the other two. Finally, the T is on the other side of the tensioners on its way to the sea floor. It's a major success for the solitaire, bringing the ship one step closer to building the pipeline on schedule. On the Texas coast, the huge gas processing platform and the hull that will float it must be joined together. But first, the team has to get the hull off this ship, the mighty Servant 3. This mega cargo ship offloads by sinking, letting her cargo float. For the last few hours, a strong breeze has made it too dangerous to move the hull, but finally, the wind has died down. Now the tricky business of sinking the mighty Servant 3 begins. The hull's massive towers jut up like four huge sails. Every time the wind kicks up, the massive structure strains against the mooring lines with tons of force. On the bridge of the mighty Servant, the captain carefully controls the flooding of ballast tanks. 